Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this video, we will be discussing the financial statement and putting together the financial statement from the trial balance. And specifically, the instructions will be to use the trial balance to create a balance sheet income statement and statement of owner's equity as of 1231X1. So what we have over here is, of course, the uh, trial balance that is now the adjusted trial balance, which has been adjusted in the adjusting process. So we had the accounting uh, journal entries. We then uh, had the adjusting process to create the adjusting entries. And the next step would, of course, take, be taking that adjusted trial balance, which is in terms of debits and credits represented by debits being without brackets and credits being with brackets. And we know that the debits minus the credits equal zero, meaning that the debits equal the credits, which is our playing board. And now we want to format this into a plus and minus financial statement, which will look like this. Notice that the financial statement is a lot bulkier than really the trial balance. The trial balance tells us a lot right here, and we it's almost um, easier to use if we know how to use it. We can see, well, net income, you want to know what net income is? It's right there. We add that up. Assets, we can just highlight these and say, hmm, there's the assets. They add up to 765, 700 liabilities. If you want to know, that adds up to 22.9. The total owner's equity is 742, 800. This is actually a, a quicker way to look at it in a lot of ways, but once again, we don't want to present that to somebody else because they will not understand the debits and credits. If we say, if we show this to someone, they're going to say that's a negative number not a credit or we don't know, I don't know what a credit means. It looks like a negative to me and, and that looks like a loss and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this information from a debit and credit building blocks and put it into this bigger and bulkier financial statement, which is in terms of plus and minus, which is in accordance with the uh, double entry accounting equation being assets equal liabilities plus totals that uh, owner's equity. So that is our goal. So remember that this is just basically a puzzle. So what we want to convince ourselves just like we convince ourselves when we put if we open a box of a puzzle and, and dump the contents on the ground we need to convince ourselves that the puzzle does actually fit back together and if we cannot um, fit it back together it's probably our it's probably something that we just didn't spend enough time to figure the thing out because we know that the picture on the box is what the puzzle will look like if we are able to configure it in that way and in other words we, we are, we're convinced that that will work if we were not convinced, if we had doubt in our heads that the actual puzzle within the box was containing the necessary pieces to be put together in the necessary way in order to make the picture on the box, then it's doubtful that we would complete the puzzle. So the same is true here. We want to convince ourselves that the total assets represented by this double hundred line number will equal the total liabilities and owner's equity if the total debits, meaning represented by the sum of here, minus the total credits equals zero, meaning if we can represent the double entry accounting system with the total debits equal to the total credits, we can then just reconfigure those numbers in like a puzzle, just shuffle them around into a plus and minus format in which the same will be the case. It'll still balance. It'll be true. Just a different way to organize the numbers. If this works, this has to work. If this doesn't work, we made kind of an error. Now I'm going to make this kind of on a black background just to, uh, show the assets being in the color corn coding that we've looked at in the past uh, when you work the worksheet you won't have to do it this way uh, it, this will take a few more adjustments on my part to format the worksheet so it, that might be helpful to, to look at if you have formatting questions and one of the things we do want to pick up as we go through here is the formatting of the financial statements we do want to pick up some formatting in excel uh, as well because the, the two things really need to be it's more interchangeable as we do this because it'll really save time uh, in the long run. So let's uh, work that. So first of all, we're gonna I'm gonna work the balance sheet first to show you that the balance sheet is kind of everything. It includes everything, and then we will see how these financial statements basically tie together again. So if we look at the trial balance, we're just gonna say I'm gonna find a home for all these accounts over here. Once we do that, then. Uh, it must be in balance if we're adding them up correctly. Okay, so first we're going to say the assets are going to start off on the balance sheet. And remember the balance sheet is as of a point in time, meaning uh, we're going to say December 31st, 2000X1, 
point in time end of the year as opposed to the income statement which is a time frame in this case being a month ended 1231x1 so the income statement makes no sense unless it has a beginning and an end the beginning may being december 1st in this case the end being december 31st the balance sheet makes no sense to have a beginning and an end really it only has an end because the balance sheet is telling us where we are as of the end the income statement is telling us some kind of story uh, going back in time uh, to get to that point in time so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to assets and within assets there's going to be two subcategories we're going to make them uh, current assets and we got property plant and equipment i'll discuss those briefly as we go we want to look at the formatting of this so current assets we're going to say this is assets subcategory of assets then we're going to list all the current assets and the current assets are going to include cash accounts receivable prepaid insurance supplies land i mean not land and not land <laughs> and um, current assets are going to be assets that are going to be uh, somewhat liquid more liquid assets meaning they're more readily converted to cash or they're going to be used somewhat uh, quickly and as opposed to, to property plant and equipment which will uh, not be used for a long period of time in other words uh, more liquid would mean kind of where they're going to be used to generate revenue more quickly or can be converted to cash more quickly and thereby be used to pay our our current obligations our debts fairly quickly as opposed to property plant and equipment which uh, if we wanted to pay our debts with it if we wanted to pay off our credit card bill with land we would actually have to go get a loan against it or uh, sell it uh, so it's not liquid in that case we really like it we need it good thing to have not liquid can't pay our bills with it too readily so we're going to separate those two things out and we could uh, bring our cursor over here and under here start typing cash And notice once you start typing, it's going to try to help you out like that. When I type C, it tried to read that it wants current uh, assets, but I don't want that. That's the autofill. So if I just keep typing, then it'll it'll allow me to put in cash. And then if I hit enter, it'll put that in there. Now, what I'm going to do that's a little bit easier is notice that we could use formulas with words as well. So if we just want to bring this over here, we could copy and paste it. Another way we can do it is just say equals and point to that cash and enter. I don't care which way you do it. Um, we could we could right click and copy it. I'm going to put this one, copy the accounts receivable, right click and again paste it one, two, three, meaning we're going to paste the um, content, the values only. Of course, we can type it in there. Again, we can use the equal sign like that enter and that any way to do that is is okay and so that brings us down to supplies now now because this is a subcategory of these I want to indent these a little that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna indicate that these are all part of the current assets section in order to do that I'm gonna highlight these we're gonna go to the home tab or to go to the alignment group and this little thing right here it says increase indent if you hover over that and if you click that one time it'll increase the indent like so and that is the indication that all the financials will look like if you can both do this kind of formatting and read it it'll help you read the financial statements a lot uh, more readily and then we're going to bring our cursor to the inside column of the two this does not represent debits and credits here this just represents us we're going to sum up the category on the left hand side and then add them up put the total on the right hand side so these two columns do not represent debits and credits. Remember, we're converting from debits and credits to plus and minus. That's the point. Now, once again, you could type this in here, 568. But I highly recommend using formulas because it's very easy for us to do something like this and put you know one less zero and then our whole thing will be off because of that problem that problem is a lot less likely to happen if we use formulas meaning if we said equals and then point to that number and then i can hit Control enter that's what we pointed to that one and there it is now that number has to be this number and we can check it did we find a home for that and we can come over here and say yeah it went right there and so we could do the same here i'm going to say that equals the accounts receivable accounts receivable equals accounts receivable 
enter. Once again, you could type it in there, but I'm going to try to use formulas as much as possible. That equals the 11,000. Enter. That equals uh, the 1,005, the supplies, and enter. So those are all the current assets. Now, we could even do that a little bit faster if we wanted to, meaning we could say that this equaled this number. Control enter. Now we're on the cell rather than in the cell. And we could use the autofill, and, and Excel will actually predict that if I copy the formula down, then it will want us to move from here to here. If this is taking that cell, and I move this cell down, copying the formula down, then Excel will say, well, you would probably want most of the time to move the related formula down one cell. That's how, ex that's how spreadsheets generally work. And in this case, that's what we want, because that's what we usually want. So if you put your cursor right on that little um, box right there until your cursor looks like that, you know, you got like crosshairs there, then hold down the left click and drag down. That's called autofill, and that will uh, make the formula go in that fashion. So that brought the formula down to there, brought the formula down to there, brought the formula down to there, exactly what we wanted. So you can start practicing that. And then, of course, we will uh, sum these up. So we're going to sum them up and call them total current assets. And then I want to indent this two times because I'm going to say that's going to be the subcategory. We indent it. I'm going to indent this two times, put it in the right-hand column. Now, I can't indent when I'm in the cell. Notice all this stuff is gray up here because I'm in the cell. So I have to hit Control-Enter. Now it'll be on the cell rather than in the cell. Now all this stuff is available to us. And we can then go to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and we can select the Increase Indent button like so. So then we're going to sum it up. And I'm going to sum it up to the left-hand side. So these are all going to be added up. We're going to pull that over here to the left. And in order to, to do the sum function, multiple ways you could do it. But I'm going to put my cursor in M9. You could select the home tab, the sum function here. Uh, I generally like to type it in there. So if you type in equals sum, all these functions related to the sum function are, you know, some kind of sum will, will pop up. We just want the standard sum function. If you learn anything in Excel, you know, the sum function is the thing you need to learn. So if you know the sum function <laughs> and how to format cells, then you know how to work with a lot of spreadsheets. That's basically what a lot of spreadsheets will consist of. And so we want to use it. I'm going to say double click on the sum function, and then I'm going to highlight the, the area that we want to sum, meaning I'm going to highlight from here down to here. Excel sees that as L5, L5 being this cell, down to L9. And then we could close it up, but you don't really need to. I'm just going to hit uh, Control Enter. And there we have it. It's summed it up here. It's this number. If I double click on it, it shows what is summed. And if we were to punch that into a calculator, we could obviously check that by saying it's 568000 plus 36900 plus 11000 plus 1050 is this number here. So we have it there. Excel also gives another nice little check figure because notice that I want to sum that up to these. If I highlight these, that adds up to, it sums it for us down here in the status bar. So we can see it down there as well. Now, just a few other things on the formulas since uh, we're working with formulas a bit. Another way to put the formula in there is we, you know, you could do this. This is what we've been doing in the past. We haven't been summing. We could say this equals this cell plus this cell plus this cell plus this cell. And that would be the same thing. That is not a function that's just adding up the cells and that'll give you the same number but of course it's a little bit more tedious to do that if we have the longer sets of numbers the sum function will be easier to use uh, if you just want to use it as a calculator you could type in equals 568000 plus 36900 plus 11000 plus 1050 and again once we hit enter it will calculate, or calculate such as a calculator uh, as long as we have the equal sign starting that out. But of course, again, that's really not efficient if we're using Excel. The easiest thing to do in Excel is to use the sum function. And I suggest using it this way equals the sum 
double click the sum, highlight the area, and then control enter. And Excel sees that as the sum bracket of, this is a, a range, uh, L5 colon L9, L5 through colon L9. All right, so then we could add a bottom border here, see if I want to indicate that this is a, a line and I'm gonna to try to add a green one because I because you know I made it a black background. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to the home tab, font group, drop down, menu, more borders all the way at the bottom. And I'm gonna choose the color green for the border. I'm gonna make it this dark green. I'm gonna make it a thick border, and then I'm gonna apply it to the cell here. We could say on the bottom, or we could just this is, represents one cell. So if I click this bottom border that represents just the bottom of the cell that we are on. For example, if I hit uh, OK, then there it is. It's on the bottom of that cell. So we'll do that a few more times as we go. Uh, if, you, if you don't you know, do that in your problem, that's, that's OK. That's probably beyond in the formatting section. OK, so then we have the uh, next section of assets, which we're going to call property. Plant and well, let me put it up one. I'm skipping this. So put it up here. Prop property plant and equipment. And I'm going to put a colon because once again, that's going to be a subcategory, and that's going to be these two categories down here where we have uh, equipment and accumulated depreciation, and where we have land equipment and accumulated depreciation. All right, so I'm going to put this the same way we could type this in I could type in land here notice we also could use a formula so I want this one here I could say equals the equipment even though that's a that's not a, a number it still will pull over that uh, word and or we could the other way we could obviously do this is copy this and put it here paste it just remember to paste it one two three meaning the values only. In either way you do that is fine. Um, on this last one, I'm actually going to say less. And this is one area where people have a lot of problems. And that is because notice that this asset right here is a credit balance. It's a contra asset. And remember what that means, that accumulated depreciation is, is related to the, in particular, the equipment in this case, because the equipment goes down in value and therefore, the, uh, this is what we bought it for. This is the reduction. That's the amount that we have depreciated. That's the amount of expense that we have allocated out through the life of the equipment thus far. And so, that's what, so we're going to say less here. So we're going to have this plus this minus this. Now, that'll cause us another little bit of a problem when we format this. So we'll have to take a look at that. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to highlight these again. I want to indent these three because it's a subcategory of property, plant, and equipment. In order to do that, we go to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and this little arrow says Increase Indent. Select that, and we have it. All right, so we'll put our cursor in here in the Land section. Once again, I'm going to select Equals, and Land over here, I'm just going to point to the number. You could, you could type in the number. I'm going to use formulas as much as possible. I recommend that you use formulas. It's also very nice for the grader of the projects if you use formulas. And I know that um, that's the top thing on people's mind to make things easier on the grader. And so we're gonna say equipment as well equals the uh, 135.3. And notice if we do that here, we say that equals the accumulated depreciation, we'll get a negative oh, 99.50. And you're going to say, no, that's not a negative, that's a credit, because it's a credit over here. Excel sees it as a negative. We on the financial statements would see it as a negative. And usually on the financial statements, we do not want to have uh, a negative in there, because we're going to tell our readers not by negative signs, not by brackets, when they should subtract. We're going to tell them in words. So the financial statements will generally have positive numbers, non-bracketed numbers, no credits, and we'll generally tell people it's a subtraction problem in the text saying less, something like that. So I'm going to I'm going to change this and I want to flip the sign here. I want to flip the sign 
And the way we flip the fine is we could multiply it times negative one. Like I could take this and say times negative one because anything times negative one will flip the sign. And that's one way to do it. Now Excel sees a negative one instead of doing that as if I just put a, a negative in front of it, that's kind of like the same thing. Excel's saying take that and multiply it times negative one. So that's how I would represent that. If you're not comfortable with that so far, if this is that's a little too much for you, you could again just type it in there. But again, I would greatly prefer using the formulas. And if you're going to type type the formula, also note that this cell is overlapping this cell, and that's okay because when when you put your cursor on this cell, and if I was to type something such as a negative and point to this number, then hit equals. It will, it will then just cut it off. So it didn't delete it, it's still there, but now it's been overwritten. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there for now. You could, uh, you know, abbreviate this. A lot of people, it'll say cum D, maybe something like this to indicate accumulated depreciation. Obviously we have to learn, we have to use these long words because of course it confuses people which increases our billing rate. And so we need those. So we're gonna then pull that over to the outside here now we can't sum these up because remember this is a minus on this side. So what we really want is one one two five zero zero plus one three five three zero zero minus nine nine oh five zero, like so. So we we do need to do uh, just an equals like this, and then I would point to them say this plus this minus this, and again this drives people crazy until they get used to it because Excel sees that as um, L11 plus L12 plus L13 but if you look at it pictorially you can say whatever's in that box plus whatever's in that box minus whatever's in that box it, it starts to become somewhat intuitive and less bothersome and so then we're gonna hit control enter and there we have it now we have down here total assets so notice well I'm gonna put this bottom border on it again and since I have a bottom border up here, I could just copy the formatting and I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna put my cursor here. I want that bottom border down here too. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab. I'm gonna to go to the format painter and select that. And what that does is it copies the format, but not anything else. And I'm gonna click down here with the paintbrush and boom, it puts the underline there as well. Okay, so uh, notice that in, in the financial statements, we're only gonna uh, sum up one column at a time. So now we're on total assets down here we're not going to jump back to this column. There's something right above it. There's nothing to the left of it first. Therefore, we have to do something with this number. And that means that we're not going to bounce back over here. That's pretty much how it's going to be with all financial statements. So that means we're only going to add up the outer column, which of course makes sense because these are the two subcategories of assets which have been summed up over here. Now we'll sum up the outer column, which if we did in a calculator would be 165950 plus 148750. But we're not going to do it that way because we're going to use the sum function. So I'm going to use the sum function because that's the best way to do it. I'm going to hit equals sum and sum. And this kind of bugs people sometimes that I we can sum this whole range from here to here. And people say, well, there's a bunch of blank cells in there. And that's okay because they're, they're all going to be zero. So we'll say it's, you know, that plus a zero, 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 zero plus that. That's how I would do it. Now, you, you could obviously, in this case, there's only two numbers, so you could say this equals this plus this. You could do it that way. Uh, you could sum it in the calculator and type it in there, but I recommend not doing so because if there's going to be errors now, notice if there was a problem, if we messed this up and we needed a different number and say it was 50 instead, watch this number will change automatically. Like, ooh, and it changes the whole thing automatically and that is very helpful. So I'm gonna undo that, and then we will come over to the liability side. So the liabilities are represented by these three numbers, accounts payable, wages payable, unearned revenue, and they're in the liability section because it's in order, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. So once again, we could type that in there if we wanted to, accounts payable, B -L -E. and uh, or we could say this equals and point to the next liability like that, uh, wages payable in this case, enter. Or we could right click on this, copy it, right click, paste just the formula or just the value, sorry, not the formula. There is no formula, but anyway. 
All right, and then we can highlight these and we want to indent those. So we want to go to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and increase the indent like so. Now notice these are all credits. And our goal here, once again, is to convert the credits to a plus and minus format. So we don't want these to be credits. We don't want these, Excel sees them as negative numbers. We don't want them to be negative numbers. So of course we could just say, all right, I'm just gonna type these in here as a positive, because we don't want the negative. Or what I recommend is selecting the, instead of hitting equals, we're gonna hit negative. So that's still seen as a, as a formula or function in uh, Excel, but uh, it's what it will do is multiply whatever we select basically times negative one or you can think of it as it will basically flip the sign and then select the accounts payable so that is I 17 and enter so that pulled it over and it changed it from a negative number to a positive number gonna do the same thing here negative not equals of that number and enter negative of that number Control enter there we have it and of course Excel puts in the equal sign because Excel wants the equal sign but if you don't really need to do it because it'll do it for you and that's one less keystroke so so save the whole keystroke up so the other way you can obviously do that is if if you just did it on the first one notice once again that you can use the auto fill so if you put your cursor like right on that square where you got the crosshair and then le uh, left click and drag down then you will have that as well Okay, so then we're gonna sum this up and we're gonna call this uh, total liabilities. Tab, tab. And I'm gonna indent this two times. Once again, if I'm in the cell, I can't indent. All this is great. I need to be on the cell. I can hit Control Enter to be on the cell, not in the cell. This will all be available to us at that point. Then we go to the Home tab, Alignment Group, and increase the indent. I'm gonna do it two times. I actually want to do it one more time over here. And I didn't put the total in down here as well, which should be, uh, I'm going to call it total property plant and equipment. And I'm going to indent that two times. Okay, and once again, I'm out of room a bit, so I would have to, I might go back and abbreviate that, but I'm going to leave it at, at that for now. And so we're going to say total liabilities. Now you, you might be saying, well, you started with current liabilities and now you're going to put total liabilities down here. And that's going to be the same reason as before. Current liabilities means we basically picked an arbitrary number and we said a year. Things that are going to be due within a year are going to be current liabilities. And the reason we're going to have current versus long term is that we want to uh, be able to see if we have enough assets or cash, at least, or available cash coming soon to pay the liabilities that will be coming up in uh, a short period of time, a year in this case. And so we, we break out between current and long term, but in our case, there are only current liabilities. So we're gonna have this kind of weird thing where we're gonna say, we're gonna add up the current liabilities, but instead of putting current liabilities and then another line that says, hey, that's also total liabilities, we're gonna say, hey, they're current, and that's also all there are in this case because we don't have any uh, long-term liabilities, which would be liabilities like a loan, which would be have a uh, life over a year, kind of like a mortgage or something, in which case we'd have um, liabilities that we don't really have to worry about in the short run, but we do in the long run. So then we're going to sum that up once again. And of course, uh, if we were to do it in a calculator, we're saying 12150 plus 2500 plus 8250 is the 229. We will, of course, do that in the outer column with the function being our favorite one equals sum for sum and we will then double click the sum function and then just highlight the box around where you want to sum that up and then if we hit control enter there's the 22.9 we once again you could do that with a calculator but you really want to start practicing with the Excel will really help you out also want to underline here so I'm gonna but I want it orange so I can't do that uh, format painter thing so I'm gonna go to the home tab font group drop down on the border borders at the bottom change the color want it orange thick border I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the cell like so okay there's the thick border now we're on owner's equity 
Now this is kind of like the tricky part, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it uh, this way first. So so remember the owner's equity account down here is capital. That's really the only thing that we're gonna have on the balance sheet in terms of owner's equity. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna put uh, the owner's well I'm gonna do it this way equals this account right there. And I, because there's no subcategory, I'm just going to put that on the right hand side because that's the only we're only going to have one number in there. And I'm going to just say uh, that is a negative of this number because I want to flip the sign. So once again, you could just type in that number, but I want to flip the sign, make it a negative, and um, it's going to be yellow in this case. I'm going to indicate the yellow is going to be indication of the fact that these numbers will be seen somewhere else on the financial statements. So we will see that number somewhere else. So I'm going to leave that there for now. I'm going to tell you right now it's it's wrong, but I'm going to leave it there just to show you why. And then we're going to bring our cursor down to the bottom of the right hand side where it says total liabilities and owner's equity. Once again, we're not going to jump from column to column. There's something above it before there's something to the left of it. Therefore, we're going to have to stay in this outer column. And of course, we're only going to uh, add the liabilities and the owner's equity. And so in a calculator, that, of course, would be 22900 plus 663820, like that. But we're going to use the sum function. I suggest using the sum function. You could just hit, uh, add them, but I'm going to put SUM, double click. And then I'm going to highlight from here to here. Once again, don't worry that there's, there's blank cells in the middle. That's OK. And then we're going to hit equals. Now, if you wanted to add it, some people tend to start to think that um, you have to hit the sum function to add. And I've seen people use the sum function and try to subtract within the sum function. Uh, if you just wanted to add the two and they were non-adjacent, let's say that there were numbers in between, then you, you don't need the sum function. You could hit equals that plus that. You don't need it within the sum function. You could just hit equals that plus that. If you want to add a range, then the sum function is relevant. All right, now there's a problem here, and that problem is that the total assets do not equal the total liabilities and owner's equity. So there's something wrong here because those two things should be equal. And the, the, the error here is that um, this number, even though it's the only account on the owner's equity, and even though it's on the trial balance uh, in the same format, in the same kind of uh, format that it is on the financial statement, this number only represents on the trial balance the beginning owner's equity because remember that all the stuff in blue really represents owner's equity meaning this represents owner's equity at the beginning of the story kind of like the beginning of the movie that's where we were at the beginning of the movie or the story of the period of time this represents what happened during that story or that period of time so on the trial balance the part that says owner's equity is really kind of like the beginning balance plus anything that we contributed any investment that we put into it and the income statement down here is the story the draws are what we took out during that time period so for this number to be correct uh, it really needs to be the sum of all of this so I'm gonna if I highlight this I mean we could do it in a calculator I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, the credits minus the debits so this is a credit six six three eight two zero uh, this is a debit, so I'm going to subtract it, minus 1000. Zero, 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 zero. This is a credit income, so I'm going to uh, add it, plus 332250. This is a credit, uh, I mean, this is a debit, so I'm going to subtract it, minus 195870, minus 42375, minus 1000, zero, 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 minus 2925, minus 1100. Zero, zero. So that's the uh, 7428. So if I highlight these, it'll do the same thing, 742.8, like that. Uh, we can also think of it, remember that net income is the sum of the income minus the expenses. So we could also think of it as, it's the beginning balance of 663.820 plus net income, which includes all these numbers, 88980, minus what we took out, the draws, 10,000 same number now we could just sum them up over here if we use the sum function notice that this number will change automatically so we can say equals the sum double click of all the blue numbers from here to here and enter 
and now uh, but we need to I have to do the negative so I'm sorry because that of course is right but it's a credit we need to flip the sign and make it a uh, positive number because we're not representing debits and credits over here so in order to do that once again I could just put a negative right in front of the sum in front of the S I'm just gonna say sum that whole thing up then flip the sign sum that whole thing up multiply times negative one and there we have it and now we're in balance here so that's the balance sheet. Notice that's everything. We just put everything up here. We found a home for everything. But that number represents the home for all of this. And so really we want more detail behind this number. I don't want that to be just that one point in time. Well, I do there, but we also want to know the story behind that number. We're not going to tell the whole story. We're just going to tell one month of the story. And everything prior to that one month of the story is stuck in the beginning balance there. So we're going to retell the story basically of the owner's equity in a more detailed fashion over time period using the income statement and the statement of owner's equity. So the reason these are yellow is because these two are the same. So we see them somewhere else. And we're going to reconstruct that one and see it again on the statement of owner's equity. So we're going to reconstruct that number. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to do that with the income statement first and represent the income statement is a time frame, meaning an income statement has a beginning and an end, whereas the balance sheet is a point in time. So uh, the beginning, it says for the month ended December 31st. So that means that the beginning is the month beginning December 1st through the month ending December 31st. The story of that time period. What did we do? How did we do? How much money did we make? How much did we have to expense in order to generate that money in the same time period? Revenue recognition and matching principles, which are both accrual principles. Okay, so the first account on the income statement is revenue. Uh, we could call it income or expenses. So that, of course, is this account. So I'm just we could do it this way. I could just say equals that number. Now, I'm going to call it this big, ugly, long thing because... Um, it could be called any any one of those things. It could be called we, you know, some people will set up the books and call it revenue. Some people, if you sell things, oftentimes it's called sales. You could set it up and call it income. You could set up your books and call uh, your income fees earned because if you're a lawyer or something like that. I'm I'm going to call it all of those because I don't want people to to um, associate just one income statement account. It's an income type account, and because most businesses only do one thing. Uh, there's only going to be one type of income account, whereas like, the expense accounts will have a bunch of different ones. So whatever you call it, it doesn't really matter as long as we know it's the income or revenue type account. And because there's only one of them, we don't need a subcategory. So we're going to pull it over here to this side. I could just type in that 332, but notice that's a credit, and we don't want the credit over here. So if I want to do it with a formula, I want to say equals, but I want to flip the sign. So I'm going to do it this way, negative of that number which will flip the sign once again you could type that in there but i would much rather do it in that format and then we're going to have multiple expenses so on the expense side we're going to do a similar thing that we did up here which we which means we're going to have expenses representing the category colon representing the fact that everything under here will be an expense wages down to depreciation expense you could type those in there such as this wages expense and, and notice oftentimes uh, financial statements won't actually say expense, expense, expense after every one of them because obviously it's in the expense area. Uh, on the trial balance, we often may not have expense on everything because once again, it's in the expense area. Uh, we could do it this way. We could say equals or, or we could say plus, but I'll keep with the equals for now. Equals the wage, the utilities, enter. Or we could copy it like this, copy and paste it one, two, three. Um, and once again, we could type it. We could say equals that number, and there they all are there. Uh, also, notice that you can use autofill in the same fashion we did before. So I'm just, just to demonstrate that if we said equals that, and then we wanted to just copy that down. Once again, I'm just going to say copy that down, do, 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 and it autofills it down like that. Okay, so now we want to indent this because once again, this is a subcategory. So I'm going, to call, I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to go up to the home tab. We're going to go to the alignment group. We're going to go to that increase indent selected one time, increasing the indent to one time. 
We're going to bring this into the inside column. This does not represent debits and credits. This represents uh, the fact that we are going to sum these up. All of this is in plus and minus, not debits and credits on the financial statement. We're converting from debits and credits over here. So even though we have these two columns, a lot of people start to think that that represents debits and credits. It does not. Uh, we are summing up uh, the column over here in a plus and minus fashion. So I would do this with formulas. So I'm going to select equals that number. Wages, wages. Enter. Equals that number. Utilities, utilities. Enter. Equals that number. Insurance, insurance. Enter. Equals that number. Supplies, supplies. Enter. Oops, not equal. Enter. And equals that number. And then, of course, once again, you could just do it with the autofill. So you could put your cursor up here and see that picks up that number. And you're saying Excel thinks that if you put your cursor around that little square so you see the crosshair and then hold down the left click and drag down, Excel says, hmm, that one you probably wanted to bring it down, which we did. Down and so forth and so on. Then we're going to have the total expenses down here. And I want to indent this two times. And notice I can't do that because it's it's grayed out right here. So in order to do that, I have to be on the cell. So I'm going to hit Control Enter. Now I'm on the cell rather than in the cell. And then I'm in the Home tab, Alignment Group, Increase Indent one and two times. Then we're going to put our cursor on the left hand side. We want to add these up. So we brought them into the inside. Now we're going to add them up on the outside. If we did it with a calculator, we'd have to do this tedious fashion like this: one nine five eight seven zero plus four. 2375 plus 1000 plus 2925 plus 1100. And because we're in the amazing Excel, we can use what we call the sum function. So we're going to do that. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, th notice there's another shortcut one. You could hit Alt equals, and that pops up the sum function automatically. And then you can just highlight where you want to sum. So the keyboard shortcut, is the sh quickest way to do it is probably Alt equals. And it, it's trying to help you out. It's trying to say, hmm, you probably want to sum this column. And it's wrong in this case. Most of the time, it's kind of right. But in this case, we want to sum this column. So we're gonna, all we have to do is just come over here and say, I want that column, not that column. And it sees L22 through L26. And that's what we want. So we'll hit Enter. And in this case, uh, we might want the uh, thick underline here again. So if we wanted to do that, we go to the Home tab, Font Group, Drop Down more borders color uh, we want this dark blue we want it to be a thick bottom put it on the bottom and okay that again i'm not as concerned if you're not adding uh, bottom borders and, and if you and if you didn't have the grid lines here obviously you could just select the uh, black borders here and that would be good on a white background okay so then we'll be down here and we're going to go to the bottom line number which we call on the income statement net income tab tab and now once again we're at net income we're going to add up the outside we're going to do something with the outside column because there's something above it we're not going to go from column to column we've got total income and total expenses we like income we don't like expenses therefore it sounds like a subtraction problem to me so we're going to take the income if we had the trusted calculator of course three three two two five zero minus two four three two seven zero is that number which is that number but it's a positive number here because we are converting the credit to a plus and minus format i'm going to do it with a formula here we're going to hit equals point to that number minus point to that number and control enter and that number matches that number so notice what we have done now we have found a home for all of this all of this we haven't really found a home for these two i mean we put them up here but we haven't like reconstructed those two to reconstruct that number which includes all of that so let's do that in order to do that we of course will continue down to the statement of owner's equity now this is also the uh, end number here so uh, we might want to put the the end number kind of style is if you go to the home tab the style group you can go to the total here and that's kind of like the total style and obviously it, it made it uh, black, so that's not good. So I'm going to color the thing back to blue, or not there. And then again, if you were on a uh, just a white 
cell here then obviously the double bottom border you could use that or you could go to the font group and oftentimes the bottom line number is um, top and double bottom that's the type of format oftentimes that will be used to represent the bottom number so notice I have a similar uh, fashion here and here okay so now let's do this last part we got the statement of owner's equity and this this is going to represent the amount that is owed to the owner once again it's going to be a time period it's going to start with what with what was owed to the owner as of the beginning of the period which is this number plus what happened the story for the period in terms of how much we earned this much which is wrapped up in net income which is that number which I'm also going to make yellow because it's um, and make it yellow because we're going to see that number somewhere else and so we're going to include that number of course on the statement of owner's equity that's going to be part of the owner's equity this is how the statements are going to tie together here so we're going to start with the beginning balance of owner's equity then we're going to say this is how much we earned and then we're going to say then we took out that much from the business account to the personal account in order to help with our personal goals so we took it out of the business because we didn't need it for the business goals or we wanted to take it out in order to use in the personal goals because we're keeping the books separate from our personal books all right so then we're going to put our cursor here and in order to do that we will say that the owner's capital as of the beginning of the period which is december 1st because it's for the december 31st ended so at the beginning of the period 20x1 whatever that is we're going to say is um and once I want this number, but I want to flip the sign once again. I don't want a credit here, so instead of hitting equals, we're going to hit negative, point to that number, and then control enter. There we have it. And then we're going to say what increases it. The net income is going to increase it. So now we're going to pull this number down here. That's what we started with. How much did we earn? We earned net income. I'm just going to point to it like that. And I'm going to pull that inside because we're going to show the activity in the inner column. Once again, this doesn't mean debits and credits. This means we're going to sh we're going to group the numbers in this way by pulling them into the inner column, summing them up, or adding and subtracting to the outer column. And I'm going to say this just equals that number. So I'm going to make that yellow, indicating the fact that um, we pulled that. We see that in another financial statement. These are the things that are tying together the financial statement. And then the only thing we haven't accounted for now is draws and draws represents the money that we took out of the business so we took the money out and we spent it on our personal goals so in order to say minus here because the draws are going to reduce the capital because the capital represents money owed to the owner the draws represent money that we took out therefore it should reduce capital uh, this credit here notice is similar to these credits up here in that it kind of represents money that the company owes to somebody the difference between the liabilities and the equity being that the liabilities are owed to an outside third party a bank or something our our vendors whereas uh, the capital is the money owed to the owner the book value of the company in essence and so if uh, we took money out then that number should go down if the company paid us by giving us a check by taking money out of the business account and put it into the personal account then the capital will go down so we're going to represent that not with a minus sign but with the word less so draws like so and then I'm just going to point to that that's the last number and so here's the beginning balance here's what happened these two things happen and it's a net increase so we're going to put, we're going to put increase in owner's equity so over the time period it went up by this went down by that that's a subtraction problem it's the 88980 minus the 10 gives us that we're going to do that of course with a formula by hitting equals pointing to that number minus point to that number and hit enter or control enter and we get the 78980 and once again, we're representing that as being a subtraction problem, not with a negative sign here in Excel, but with words by saying, like, it's a subtraction problem. Read it. And then we're going to put our cursor into the last part. And we, now we have owner's equity. But instead of it being as of December 1st, it's as of the end of the time period, which, of course, is December 31st. And 
what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add this. This is what we started with at the beginning. This this is what happened. This is what we did during the period. Uh, we made income of that. We took this much out. That's the difference. And here we're going to just do something with the outer column. Remember, there's something right above it. We're not going to skip from column to column. I'm not going to go up here and then over here. I'm, if I'm going in this column, I have to stay in this column, meaning I'm going to sum up these two numbers. So, of course, it would be the 663820 plus the 78980. We're going to do it using what I would use as the sum function equals sum, double click, highlight that whole box. Once again, it's okay that you have blank cells in here. If you're saying, hey, there's only two numbers, why don't I just add them this way? You could do it this way as well, equals that plus that. That'll work as well. Now, uh, once again, we're going to double underline that. So, uh, And I'm also going to make it yellow. So I basically want to make it look like that. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, uh, Format Painter, and then just Format Paint that like so. And of course, where have we seen that number before? We've seen it here. So we just, these two financial statements told the story behind this number, which represents all of that. So really, if, we're gonna, if we were to do this, it would be safer for us to, to actually delete that and say that equals this number. It's the same number, but now we can see uh, that this thing's all tied together, how it ties together in this way. We're in balance. And then that's great. And then we're going to say, well, what about the income statement and the statement of owner's equity? Well, that's represented on the balance sheet by this number, like so, because that comes from the statement of owner's equity. Great. How does the statement of owner's equity relate to the income statement then? Well, it includes net income, which is the bottom line of this number. So net income represents all these numbers. Uh, the owner's equity then includes this and the balance to there, and then the draws. And that's what is included. That's the story behind the book value of the statement of owner's equity. All right.